Okay, welcome to C++ programming language. In this lectures, we're going to cover the functions, that C++ functions. First, we shall go through what is a modular programming and also a function. A function is a collection of statements to perform a task. And also a modular programming is breaking a program up into smaller manageable functions. All modules kind of divide and conquer. We have a complex problem we may break the program into smaller units and we solve it separately. Later, we combine together. Now, the motivation for our modular programming is to improve maintainability of the programs and also to simplify the process of writing programs. So that's the example we have here. We have a very long, complex problem or a very large problem. We can solve the whole problem in the main function and we know execution takes place in the main function but this may be complex or very difficult to maintain. So in this case, on our right side, we can break the program into three sections. Remember the main function is where execution will take place. So here we have function two, we perform a specific task. Function three, we perform different tasks. Function four, we perform different tasks. Then we are going to execute all these three functions inside the main function, which means we're going to call it or invoke it in the main function. Sometimes also we can say function two may use function three. So when we invoke function two, automatically function two also we invoke or call function three. So next is defining and also calling functions. A function call is a statement that causes a function to execute. So anytime we want to execute a function, okay, we say function call or to invoke the function. Also a function definition will be the statement that make up a function. So we may have the returning type, the name of the function, the parameter, and also the body of the function. So the definitions include, the function definition include the returning type, which is the data type, of the value that the function returns to the part of the program that call it. Then the name of the function. Again, the name of the function will follow the rules of naming identifier. So the rules of naming, for example, variables, and the same rule we are going to use to name functions. So we say function names follow the same rules as variables. Also parameter list will be the variables containing values passed to the function. So that will be the data or the message that the function will use to perform its task. Then we have the body of the function, which will be the statement to perform a function task. So this is an example of a main function. The int is the returning type, and the function name is main, and the parameter list is the open and close parenthesis. In this case, it's, it's an empty. Now, that will be, sometimes we may call this the function heading. Then that's the body of the function. So this function is going to print hello world in our screen. Now, if a function returns a value, the type of the value must be indicated. So in this case, the main function, the returning value is int, it returns zero. Now, if a function does not return a value, then its returning type will be void. So that's a good example here. We have a function name, print heading, returning type is void. And we can see the body of the function, we are printing monthly cells. There's no returning value to the function, so it's void. Now to call a function, we normally use the function name followed by the open and close parenthesis, which we may call the parameters or the actual argument. So example here is print heading. So we may call this in a main function or in another function. So normally when we call, a program execute the body of the call function. And also after the function terminate, execution resumes in the calling function at the point of call. So this is an example of a function. So here we can see that we have a function named display message. Uh, we have C out hello from the function display message. So this function is only printing a statement, hello from the function display message. So we can see that here we are calling the function, the main function, because again, as we said earlier, main function is where the execution takes place at. So we have C out hello from main. 
then we call the function display message. So it's going to execute hello from the function display message. Then we print another CR back in function main again. Always the main function will return zero int. So that's the comment. We have the definition of a function display message. This function displays a greeting. And as usual, we have the IO stream, normal include IO stream using namespace std. So we can see the output. First, we have hello from me. Second, we call the display message. So it's going to print hello from the function display message. Then the third C out is back in function main again. So that's the flow of control in the previous slide program. Uh, first, the compiler will see the function, make note of it. But as we said earlier, execution always take place in the main function. So we have the first execution will be hello from main. Then we have the string messages call. Then we execute it. Then we have see out from the function display message. Then the control goes back to the third line, which is see out back in function main again. So calling functions, we say the main can call any number of functions. Uh, it can be any amount of functions. And also function can call another function as we said earlier. And also compiler must know the following about the function before it is called. So we have to know the compiler must know the name of the function, the return type, number of parameters, and the data type of each parameter. So this will be the function heading. So that bring uh, take us to something we call the function prototype. A function prototype is a, more or less like a function declaration. So normally after we include our header files, let's say normal, normal include, the pound sign include, IO stream, uh, then using the namespace, etc. Then we can declare our functions or we say we can have our function prototypes before the main function or other functions. So normally we can see a function header doesn't have semicolon, but the function prototype is a state you, we must end it with a semicolon. So it's a declaration, function declaration. So this is an example. Again, we have the normal include IO stream using namespace std. Then you can see what we're doing here. We first of all declare the two functions we are going to use. So normally when you declare the two functions, we can have the main function. So for example, here we have the main function before we write the code for first and second. But if we didn't have the function prototype, then we always have to write the functions first before the main function. So in this main function, we just say C out, I am, I am starting in function main. Then we call the first function, we call the second function. Then we say back in the function main again. Now let's look at the first and second function. So the first function, again, the returning type is void, which means it doesn't have no returning. Uh, so only one C out statement, I am now inside the function first. Then the second function, I am now inside the function second. So when we execute this program, our output to be, I am starting the function main, then the first and second C out statement, then back in the main function. So I'm now inside the function main and also I'm now inside the, I mean, I'm now inside the function first, then I'm now inside the function second. So what is the prototype notes here? We say, oh, as we said earlier, always you have to place the prototype near the top of the program before then, right after the header files, you start with the function prototype. Also, program must include other prototype or full function definition before any call to the function. Otherwise, we may have compiler error. So that's what we are saying. For example, uh, if we don't have the function prototype, we are going to have compiler error because the main we call the function before the function is written. So in this case, we have to write the functions first before the main function if we don't want to use the prototype. 
So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. Again, these lectures, we went through the concept of C++ functions and how to, again, the synthesis and also what is a, a function prototype, also how to call the function, etc. So see you next time. Thank you.